Bible, let's get the Lord to Psalm 40. And uh, when she invited me, the Lord gave me a word for this church. You know? um, and I just you know, kind of tucked it away. I kind of thought I knew exactly where I was going. And then this morning, about 4 o'clock, he woke me up. And uh, he began to embellish on that word, to add to it. And it's a real, real blessing to hear from the Lord in that way. And so, open your Bible Psalm 40. I'm going to preach. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to get into the Word of Life. All right? Amen. And the Father, thanks so much for this another wonderful, glorious day to be with Another opportunity to worship you, magnify you, to exalt your holy name on earth. Thank you so much, Lord, that we are alive today, that we are healthy, that we are born again, that we are filled with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that we are new creatures in Christ Jesus, that old things are passed away and all things are become new. Thank you, Father, that all things are of you. And that because of your glorious presence, the Holy Spirit in us, Father, we have access to your throne today because Jesus was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. We can call you our Father today yes. because your spirit bears witness with our human spirit. Yes. And Lord, we're always thankful, Lord, you count us faithful putting us into the ministry. And we look forward to every opportunity to share the goodness of your glorious grace yes. with your people. So we thank you for those that are gathered here tonight. Thank you for this meeting. Thank you for this fellowship. Thank you for this friendship. Thank you, Lord, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is in this room. And Lord, we just look forward to a mighty manifestation of your glorious presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the praise. Thank you for the word. Thank you for people who will be doers of the word and not hearers only. Thank you for people who will sow into the work of the ministry tonight through their giving, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you will make manifest your grace in our midst. And Lord, we yield our hearts to you. And now we finally ask, Lord, that you will open the eyes of our understanding. Grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, that we may indeed be doers of this word and not hearers only. And Lord, we're very cautious to give you all the glory, all the honor, all the worship, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Before you get going, I want to acknowledge my wife here. Most of y'all know my wife. Those of you that uh, we're visiting with is my wife, Gloria, and my granddaughter, my marriage, and they're getting ready to go take care of the little family. That's <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, you got some of the boy this chapter? We got one word for you tonight. The word for tonight is now. Somebody say now. Now. That's right. The word for tonight is now. Not yesterday, not what used to be, not what's going to happen tomorrow, Amen. but what is going to happen yes, now. Amen. Hebrews 11, 6 says, uh, Hebrews 11, 1 says, uh, uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I want to deal with you about what God wants to do in your life right now. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 40, King David is writing the psalm and worshiping God. And he said, I have waited patiently upon the Lord, and he has hearkened unto me, and he has heard my cry. He has lifted me up out of a pit, a horrible pit of miry clay, set my feet upon a rock, and established my bones. He has put a new song in my mouth, yea, praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Is that what your Bible says? They said, I was waiting on God. A lot of you all are and have been waiting on the Lord your God. Faithfully, you've been praying, you've been fasting, you've been believing God for a mighty move of his spirit. You have waited on the Lord. Many of you were waiting on the Lord before you got saved. You were dealing with your difficulties, drugs, alcohol, God knows what you may have been in, in that horrible, miry pit or a place, stuck in the mud, go anywhere. You were lost in gross darkness and you were waiting on the Lord. You may not even know you were waiting on the Lord. You may have tried to fill that gaping hole in your life with other things, drugs, alcohol, promiscuity, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, when you finally came into contact with the word of the living God, it was a revelation to you that what you had been waiting on was the Lord our God. Amen. David said, I waited patiently upon the Lord. Hearken unto me. And heard my cry. Isn't that right? Yes. If you read in a, in a Psalm 27, I think it is verse 13, the Bible is very clear. And it says that uh, I have fainted unless I have believed to see yes. the goodness of the Lord in the yes. land. You ever feel like you're going to faint sometime? Yes. You're struggling against whatever's facing you, and you just feel like you're running out of everything. You know, if you run out of uh, too many things, you'll faint. You don't have enough air, you'll faint. Uh -huh. You don't eat enough food, you'll faint. You don't have enough water, you faint. You don't have enough strength, you'll faint. And there are a lot of people in the world fainting today. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9, the Bible tells us that we should not be weary in well-doing. Uh -huh. Huh? It starts in verse 7. It says, Be not deceived. God is not mine. Uh -huh. But if a man sows, that also shall he reap. If he sows to the flesh, he shall of the flesh reap corruption. If he sows to the spirit, he shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. The Bible tells us that we should not be weary in well doing. Isn't that right? 
You say, how you doing? Well, I don't know. Too soon to death. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Amen. You know who you talk to. Better than some, not as good as others. I don't know what you're comparing it to. I know this much. I'm doing well. I can say that with money in my pocket. I can say that broke his job too. Yeah. I can say that if I'm feeling like a hundred dollars. I can say that if I can barely get out of the bed. I'm doing well. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? I'm doing well. The Bible says, "Be not weary in well doing." If a woman whose son just died can ride to the prophet and the prophet inquire, "How is it with you? How is it with your husband? How is it with the child?" She uh -huh. knows they've been home dead in the bed, and she can say, "It is well." Yes. Hey, yes. I'm still alive. And yes. Dead. Aches and pains. Solomon said, in the land of the living, there is hope. Uh -huh. Better to be a lion dog than a dead man. I'm doing well. Isn't that right? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Huh? I have fainted unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He said, be not weary of well doing. Uh, for in due season you should wait if really? you don't faint. Uh -huh. They said, I would have fainted if I hadn't waited to see God's goodness in the land of the living. He said, wait on the Lord yeah. and be of good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Is that what your Bible says? That's what my Bible says. And a lot of people want to talk to us about waiting on the Lord. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 35 through 37 says, Cast not away your confidence, which has great confidence, which has great recompense of reward. The Bible says, For you have need of patience. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever told you that? You need more patience. Mm -hmm. You need to wait. It ain't time now. Come on, somebody. Huh? You have need of patience. Faith won't work without patience. Amen. Uh, I know you can drive through McDonald's and then throw a hamburger inside of your car. Amen. But you can't do that with the spirit of the living God. Amen. Sometimes you have to have some patience. Yes, that right? yes, yes. And it says that uh, 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 we, we have great recompense of reward if we, we will walk in patience, if we will serve God in patience. Isn't that right? Yes. And then it goes on to say, after you have done the will of God. Come on, somebody. Yes. Huh? After you have done the will of God, then some things will happen in your life. I want to show you something tonight. You have patience. James chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, the Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. You ever fell into something? Yes. And you know the funny thing about temptation and stuff like that? They don't come in singles. Uh -huh. They like dogs. They travel in pets. It ain't just one thing. It'll be a bunch of them. Huh? You'll think you got one handle and something else will jump on you. Isn't that right? Manifold temptations about uh -huh. God in the first fifth chapter one. Huh? It says, but count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, some folks get into trouble and all they want to do is grumble and complain because they don't know. Uh -huh. But if you know what I know, the Bible says, count it all joy when you fall in uh, and when, when, when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You ever felt like you've been through a trial? Yeah. Some of y'all feel like you're going through one right now. Some of it is all over your face. We can tell you Come on. Something. Come on. Look like you've been baptized in prune juice. Somebody say amen. Huh? Oh, yeah. uh, you're going through something. You ought to be, you ought to be joyful. That's right. You ought to be laughing more now than you were when things were all right. Uh-huh. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith. Yes. You say, I need more patience. Don't pray for that, brother. You get ready to get a little trouble. Huh? The trying of your faith work of patience. Amen. But don't try to hurry up out of it. For patience, you need to let her have her perfect work. Yeah. She got she to perfect herself in you. Yeah. Uh -huh. All that you may be perfect, mature, fully grown, Come at on. a time, wanting yeah. no yeah. thing. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Yeah. First Peter chapter 1 says that there are going to be seasons in your life when you need to be tried. Ain't no point being no heavyweight boxer you never get in a fight. Come on. Ain't no point being a football team you never got a game. Okay. You need to be tried. Yes, yes. Airplanes weren't meant to sit in hangers. You got to fly them boys from time to time. Come on. You can buy a brand new set of tires and leave your car sitting in the garage there. Dry rot right, sitting right there. Yeah. They'll last longer driving than they will sit. Yeah. Ain't that the truth? Yeah. Huh? You need to be tried. You need a good tangle from time to time. You need a good fight every now and then. Now then you get high mind that you need to find out that you are not God. Come on. Come on, say amen. I said sometimes you need a good fight. You need to be tried from time to time. 
And so we wait on the Lord. We trust Him. We exercise some patience. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter, in our, in our, in, in First Peter chapter one, that when we get into those trials, we, we get into those tests. The Bible says that He wants to find us in the praise and honor and glory. Uh -huh. He wants to see if we can make it through that day. You know why, why some of y'all keep getting this, getting the same test over and over again? Because you keep flunking it. This ain't like the public school system. They ain't gonna just pass you through. You gotta pass these tests. First thing you gotta learn to do is praise God. That's right. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I said praise God. They're talking about singing a bunch of songs. Anybody can sing songs. Uh huh. Praise an outward manifestation of an inward confidence. Uh huh. That when the stuff presses on you, you know that your God is gonna deliver you. Yeah. When they told Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that they didn't bow down when the music played, they were going to throw them in the fiery furnace. They said, bring it on, O king. Our God, whom we serve continually, is able to deliver us, and he will deliver us. A lot of people mess that up and say, yeah, and if he don't deliver us, we still ain't going to know. If he don't deliver you, you're going to die. We will pray. No, that is not what they said. They said if you throw us in the furnace, God will deliver us. If you don't, we're not going to bow down. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Yeah. When you get tried, you got to learn to praise God. You got to know that He will never leave you nor forsake you, not even to the end of the age. You got to know that God is not a liar. Uh -huh. That circumstances do not change the promises of God. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody. Huh? Yeah. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. All He wants to find you in the honor. Sometimes people get into a test and they get crooked, like rivers. You know, you know why rivers are crooked? Because they avoid trouble. That's why men are crooked too. Get in a little money trouble and all of a sudden they tie an offering chance go somewhere else. So I'm about to say amen. Amen. You know, God has arranged it so you can never say you don't have enough money to pay your taxes. He said the tithe comes off the top of all your increase. God has got more sense than any man. He gets his off the top. You can never say you don't have enough money to pay your tithe. If you find a dollar and you got $1,200 worth of bills, you can pay your tithe. That 10 cent belongs to the Lord. Come on. What you don't have is enough money to pay your bills. Come on. Come on to say amen. Amen. See, people lose their honor when they get into trouble. They lose their honor when they get into difficulty. You know why you lose? Because you never had. Uh huh. Honor. Honor is a standard set through time spent. There are certain things you do a certain way because you spend time with certain people. You'll never see me come out of my house without my shoes shining. Because my daddy shined his shoes every day. If he went hunting, he shined his boots. You ain't gonna never wave with those bedroom slippers were shining. I walk out the house with, with run over shoes that are not shining. My daddy roll up in his grave. I spent too much time with him to dishonor that principle. Uh -huh. And when you spend time with our father, there are certain things you want to do. Come on, that's true. Amen. Yes. But some people get into trouble and all of that goes out the window. And they start ducking and jiving and, and, and cheating and compromising. They got no honor. Uh-huh. If you got no honor, you'll never see any glory. You'll never see a manifestation of the goodness of God. Because you won't stick around long enough for it to show up. Somebody say, wait on the Lord. I say, somebody say, wait on the Lord. Oh, uh, come on. You say, well, Pastor, how long do I have to wait? And what do I do while I wait? See, that's the word, you know. You asking God how long he asking you how long. How long do I have to wait, Lord? How long will you live in unholiness? How long will you tarry in the valley of indecision? Huh? Somebody say, how long? How long? I said, say, how long? How long? Look at Hebrews chapter 10. Man, I tell you, and this is a good word. Yeah. I want to read this one so I don't mess it up. I've been quoting a bunch of them. Some of y'all been finally splitting the verb in there. <laughs> Hebrews 10, 35. I want to read this one so you. Cast not away therefore your confidence. You don't feel like giving up. Get about it. Reach that briefcase case hand in my towel. Hebrews 10, 35. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience. Listen, that 
after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. How long do you have to wait? What are you going to do while you wait? Huh? Well, you need to pay attention to what the scripture says. If you look at Hebrews chapter 10, it tells you how long you have to work. You have to wait until after that. <laughs> after that. After what, Pastor? After you've done the will of God. After you've done the will of God. You can't expect him to show up if you have done the will of God. You just might as well keep on waiting. And since you got nothing to do, why you wait? Why don't you try doing the will of God? Come on, Y'all ain't shouting like you were in the Huh? After you've done the will of God. If you look at Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, we read in Acts chapter 2, is, um, response to reading a few minutes ago. If you look at Acts chapter 1, after Jesus had been crucified, dead, and buried, raised again the third day from the dead, he walked around Jerusalem and surrounded the earth for about 40 days. And he was getting found in the to the disciples. And he got to a place where he finally told them to wait in Jerusalem. Don't leave Jerusalem. They were up there for, for uh, Passover. And normally when Passover was done, they would go home. You know, like good family reunion, you know. See, I double A, you know, when you go on any trip like that, you do what you got to do and you go home, right? And normally they would go home. He said, don't go home this time. He said, I want you to stay here. I want you to wait for the promise of the Father. He said, he, you have heard of me. See, I told you throughout my ministry that when I leave, and I need to leave, he said, it's necessary that I go away. Because right now I'm limited to this physical flesh, but I need to go away so I can send back another comfort. Somebody that can abide with you forever. Isn't that right? Is that what he said? And so he had warned them that he was leaving and the Holy Spirit was coming. He said, that a time is here. He said, I want you to stay in Jerusalem and wait for that promise. Right? He gave them a little instruction. And he said in verse 8, because they were concerned about natural human power. They wanted to overthrow their enemies. They wanted to go back and do away with the Romans. He said, it's not for you to know the times of the season which the Father was placed in known power. Verse 8, he said, but you shall see power. After that, the Holy Ghost is coming. Mm -hmm. Right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Huh? And he tells them what they're going to do. They're going to go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and other parts of the earth, and they're going to be witnesses unto him. Somebody say, after that. After that. Now, why are you waiting? You're waiting on that after that. There's some things to do. Why are they were waiting in that other room? They went prayer. They went fasting. They were in unity. They took care of some ministry business. They replaced Matthias. They replaced Judas with Matthias. They took care of business. Isn't that right? They weren't in there in a bunch of confusion and strife and worry and anxiety and going through a bunch of changes. They weren't in there falling cake and committing adultery and living like the devil. Somebody say amen. They weren't playing me with some drinking liquor. What? No. I don't think so. Holy Ghost would have come and burn them all up. They went there living holy. Isn't that right? Some of you give them a little idle time and they, they, they can't live all of them. You know, unassisted for 20 minutes. Isn't that right? Come on now. Come to church and look like little angels. Hit the parking lot and the devil jumps right on Maybe I don't know nothing to you. Somebody say amen. amen. But they went there doing what they were supposed to do. And they waited for the arrival of the Holy Spirit. But what are you supposed to do while you wait? Look at Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Some of y'all know the scripture. Now I'm going somewhere and you have no idea where I'm going. Look at Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 10. Say, man, I'm trying to, you said, how you doing? So I'm holding on. Huh? I'm holding on. Is that what, you know what they say? Man, it sounds like some people about to run out of gas. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 10, the Bible says, find it. Find it, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Huh? You got a lot going on in your life? Feel like you're about to run out of gas? You don't know what's going to happen? The Bible said, be strong in the Lord. Isn't that right? And in the power of his might. Is that what your Bible says? It says, put on the whole armor of God. Do you see that? Huh? People are coming out of the house unclad, not fully clothed. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Huh? He said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Notice it doesn't say the power of the devil. He's a defeated foe. He has no authority. Amen. He's a toothless lion. The Bible says he, he walketh about as a roaring lion. He is not a roaring lion, but he acts like one, seeking whom he may devour. When we were little children, we used to play Mother May I. Mother May I take one giant step. If Mother didn't say, yes, you may, you took that step, you were out the game. Isn't that right? And the devil said, may I give you cancer? Uh, may I take all your money? May I mess up your marriage? May I goof up your children? May I run you away from church? May I get you in unforgiveness? May I throw you over there in promiscuity? Lord have mercy. Y'all standing there looking at him, 
like a cow with a new gate, like Eve in the garden. Eve, me to open your mouth and say, no! You get a good look at it, you might say, hell no! <laughs> That's the only thing you remember from this message. He <laughs> <laughs> sure knows something. Now put on that arm. Stand against the wiles of the devil. He don't have no power. Wiles, tricks, deception. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 that the Spirit speaks that in the latter time that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed unto seducing spirits. Come on. Amen. Deceit. The devil ain't gonna jump out from behind a bush wearing a red suit with a pitchfork and growl at you. The Bible says he comes as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. He's deceitful. He'll sneak up on you if you are ignorant concerning him. Is that right? Huh? Amen. So we're wrestling not with the, against flesh and blood, but against principalities and not people. Powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take on, on upon unto you the whole armor of God. You got to put on all your clothes in. Mm -hmm. You can't run out the house thinking he won't see. Isn't that right? That's right. That you may be able to listen. We'll stand in the evil day. That's not the tribulation. And that's any day you are tried and tested. The evil day. And having done all, do what? Stand. Having done all, do what? Stand. Having done all, do what? Stand. You heard the song, having done all, you just stand, right? Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people, they want to read the stand part, but they want to overlook the having done all part. You standing, but you ain't done what you're supposed to do. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, you can't just do all, you gotta, you, you, you can't just stand, you gotta do all before you stand. Let me tell you what you look like. You are standing out there thinking you're standing, but you haven't done all. So you out there without your arm on. You know what you're doing? You're streaking. Some of you think you're standing, but you're not just streaking. You're running around here naked. You haven't done the will of God. Come on. Doesn't the Bible say in James chapter 1 and verse 22, but be ye doers of the word? Not hearers only, mm -hmm. deceiving yourselves. Mm -hmm. People like to see. They like the emperor's new clothes. Remember the emperor walking around naked as a jaybird, somebody that sold him a phony suit of clothes. Invisible thread they made these clothes out of. Uh huh. I took all the emperor's jewels. He just naked as a jaybird, and because he's surrounded by sycophants, people that either don't have the wisdom to know he's naked, or the courage to tell him he's naked. And they talk about how beautiful it took a little child, somebody without all of that larceny in their heart, to say, that man is naked as the day he was born. Some of you naked too. One of these churches, people telling you you all right, you're not all right. Mm -hmm. You're going to hell if you don't repent. Uh -huh. If you don't give your life to Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. Mm -hmm. People used to say you're going to bust hell wide open. No, you ain't. It's going to bust you wide open. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Man. Negative for Jaybird. It ain't the economy. It ain't your circumstances. It's not your neighbor. It ain't a white man, a Mexican, or, or Indian, or a Jew. It's you. You're out here thinking you're standing and you're streaking. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's good. Make sure you've done all before you start to stand. Uh huh. Living holy, walking upright, walking in forgiveness. Come on, somebody. Come on. Amen. I'm here to all the praying for God for finances. They ain't worth a tired check in 20 years. <laughs> you're cursed. I love you, but you're cursed. I can't bless what God is cursed. Come on. You like, to, you like to quote it the other way. You can't curse what God has blessed. That's true. But if that's true, you can't bless what God is cursed. Pray all I want to. You, if you won't put your hands to labor, all you want to do is sit at home watch TV set on sofa and eat corn chips. Anytime you give them a piece of money, you spend it on you. 
You want to ball up a dollar and throw it in the offering plate on Sunday? Well, don't shout down a little bit soon. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. All this excitement is distracting me. Huh? You pray all you want to, man. You go to all the means you please. We can pour 50 gallons of water weight oil on your head. Get Shambach, Copeland, Hagen, Benny Hinn, and any other hen to lay hands on you. Ship to come in. He sent no ship out. <laughs> Waiting on the ship to come in. Black people ought to know better. Last time a ship came to, get, came to your shore, it won't come to bring you nothing, come to get you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Somebody say, stay. Doing the will of God. Get yourself clothed with the arm of God. Put on that breastplate of righteousness. Repent of your sins. Ask God's forgiveness. Be willing to change. Huh? Huh? When you come to church, man, I'm trying to get right. Well, get right. Ain't no getting right for you. On your best day, your righteousness is as filthy rags. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. You need to come on in here and let Jesus clothe you in, 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 in his Holy Spirit. Let the blood of the Lamb wash you from all your transgressions. Come on, somebody. Put on that breastplate. You need to hide behind him or get wrapped up in his righteousness. You need to get your loins girt about with truth. Mm -hmm. Stop living under the influence of all those lies. Amen. 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 Joining church and paying dues. Nothing wrong with being associated with a body of believers. You call yourself a member of the church, the Bible says we have many members. Nothing wrong with that. You need a local church that you associate with. Be under some authority that you're accountable to. Right. Huh? Mm -hmm. But just because you put your name on the road don't mean God got your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Right. I'm a born a Baptist, I'm a now Baptist. Yeah, you're going to hell a Baptist too. <laughs> My mama was a Christian. I know I'm a Christian. God don't have no grandchildren. <laughs> All the children are first generation born. That's right. Isn't that right? That's right. My dad was a preacher. So what? My daddy was a clarinet player. That didn't make me a quarter note. You must be born again. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Need your loan about the truth. You need to hear the truth about healing. You need to hear the truth about your finances. You need to hear the truth about your marriage. You need to hear the truth about telling other people the truth. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Amen. You need your feet. Uh, shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Shoes are a sign of sonship and status. Mm -hmm. Give you balance and speed. Huh? You need to move around in that word of peace. Huh? You need the helmet of salvation on your head. Huh? You need that shield of faith mm -hmm. in front of you so that you can quench the fiery darts of the wicked. You need to get that sword of spirit in your hand so you will against the operations of the devil. You ain't got all that going on. You're, you're, you're not standing. You're streaking. You're out here naked. The devil is going to arrest you for indecent exposure. Come out and say amen. amen. Am I making sense to you? Yes. Ain't going to be much more. You learning anything? Yes. Huh? Yes. You know why people go out unclothed? Because you want what you want. Regardless of what God says. Mm -hmm. That's why temptation is the best thing. Don't let flip, flip, flip with some food. The devil didn't make you do it. You wanted to do it. Yeah. It's the truth. James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Let no man say when he is tempted, he is tempted of God. Mm -hmm. For God tempted no man, neither need can. Tempted no man with evil, neither need can. But he'll try. He'll test you, but he won't tempt you with evil. Every man. Somebody say every man. Every man. That means me. Come on. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Seem like something was just drawing me. I'm not drawing you. You, you, you were drawing you. Well, say amen, old man. You know I'm telling the truth. 
Huh? Amen. Every man is tempted of his own on us. Huh? Amen. You can't blame that on the devil. You don't have that kind of thought. Let's step in there. Balaam. Remember Balaam? Yeah. Balak came to Balaam and said, won't you come up here? We're trying, to, we're trying to knock off these Israelites and it's just too many of them. It seems like they always get away. And, but we heard that you are a man with an anointing. If you say something, that happen. So won't you come up here and curse these people? <laughs> and Balaam said, man, I can't curse them. They're blessed. I just said that a minute ago, didn't I? Yeah. I can't curse them. They're blessed. They said, no, man, we give you this and we give you that, you know, money, you know. Putting the money in a man's hand, you know, he get to rethinking things. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he went to the Lord. He said, Lord, you know, they got me, you know, all this money and stuff. And they won't go up and curse them. He said, those are my people. You can't curse them when you stay home. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he didn't want to hear that. He wanted to go. He said, so I tell you what, God, if they come back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and he just got to work that thing out until he finally was on his way. To curse the church. You know how it turned out. Wind up listening to a jackass tell him what to do. Because, mm -hmm. Right? Because he wouldn't listen to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people run around here half caught. Yeah. Ain't people call to preach the gospel of the Catholic text. Mm -hmm. They ain't sin. They just went. Yeah. Huh? They thought it was a little bit of money in ministry, a little prestige, a little mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. So down the road, you know I'm telling the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And you know what I know. Mm -hmm. Everybody out here with a microphone in the church ain't called. I can have my nail, but you don't want me to build your house. <laughs> I put gas in the car, but you don't need me under your hood. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. And just because you put together a sentence and quote scripture to you, ain't called to the ministry. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. That's good. Amen. Oh, he uncalled. Are you unprepared? Out here following your lust, not the voice of the Lord. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You're stricken. You're not standing. Mm. That's what happened to Ben. He running down there trying to curse the children of Israel, and it turned out poorly for him. They was drawn away of his own lust. He was a hero of the word, but not a doer of the word. Now, there are some people who call themselves standing. Those streakers, they have gotten ahead of God. They have jumped the gun. You know what happens when you jump the gun? You wind up in the line of fire. Do you hear what I say? Yes. You jump the gun. I know the starters pistols are supposed to be shooting blanks. But you jump the gun, you wind up in the line of fire. Mm -hmm. They were ahead of the Lord. They didn't wait on the Lord. But you got other people that call themselves standing. They're not really waiting on the Lord. They're just scared. God is telling them to go. They ain't going nowhere. They, they're stalling. Those people that are ahead of God are streaking, and other people are stalling. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. They're making excuses to cover their feelings. Remember God told Moses to go to Egypt? Huh? But you go down there and deliver my people. Moses started coming with all these reasons why he couldn't go. I don't speak well like God didn't know that before he called me. He argued with God so long to ultimately God used his brother Aaron to be the mouthpiece that was never what God wanted to happen in the first place. Moses had more trouble out of Aaron and his mouth. You know I'm telling the truth. Aaron and Miriam getting together challenging his authority. And, and he want to blame Aaron and he want to blame Miriam. But the truth be told, if Moses had made so many excuses about speaking for God, Aaron would have never had a voice. I'm trying to tell you something. People make excuses. Gideon. Remember Gideon? Over there scared with the children of Israel. Got 30,000 sisters in his army. Mm -hmm. <coughs> A bunch of scared men in his army. Come on. They look like soldiers. They had on all the clothes. They had all the armaments. They were in the camp, but they were terrified. Gideon was scared too. But I thank my God that he'll call those things and be not as though they were. He'll see something in you when you don't see it. He said, get in, you mighty man of God. He said, I want you to do this and I want you to do that. Gideon said, wait a minute. He said, now Lord, if I put out a fleece tonight and I wake up in the morning and the fleece is wet and the ground is dry, 
I know it's you. Yeah. What do you mean if? Yeah. You knew it was him to start with. Yeah. Why were you leaving tonight getting up waiting on an answer from the Lord? No, you're not. You're not waiting on God. God already told you what to do. Mm -hmm. You're stalling. Yeah. Yes. Woke up next morning, face was wet, brown, and cracked. God said, you ready to go? Giddy said, well, you know, that might have been a barometric fluke. <laughs> Tell you what, God. Tonight, if I put it out and I wake up in the morning and the police is trying to ground me, but then I know it's you. <laughs> like that test was going to determine whether or not he was hearing from God. He knew he had heard from God. Amen. Amen. Why you ain't gone yet? I'm waiting on the Lord. No, you're not. You're not standing, you are stalling. Uh-huh. That's good. That's good. Lord. I know I'm telling the truth. Yeah. yeah. Remember John the Baptist? John the Baptist down there in the river Jordan, baptizing everybody, talking cash trash to the Pharisees. What you devils doing down here coming to be baptized? Go home and get right. Then I'll baptize. Bring back some fruit, meat first. He was, he was the man to Jesus show. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny how people got a whole lot of talk yeah. until Jesus shows up. Yeah. They know everything they need to know about God until Jesus shows up. You ever been somewhere and somebody was talking about you and didn't know you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on now. You have to be in the ministry for a little while for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Walk in the bank, you feel like too late to be in front of you. Somebody. <laughs> that evidence, that, you know, he's just as crazy as Skippy. That man believed this and that man don't believe it. And I just leaned and said, Really? <laughs> 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 you know, I heard that about him too. <laughs> <laughs> that let him talk. Give him a lot of rope and say, my name is Pastor Michael Edwards. <laughs> Talk about God don't know him from a hole in the head. Right, right. Isn't that right? Yeah. Jesus show up and he got nothing to say. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist down there, he was the man until Jesus showed up. Baptized me, John. He started backpedaling. Oh, Lord, I'm not worthy to baptize you. I'm not worthy to undo your shoes. You ought to be baptized me. He says, suffering to be so. You're not waiting on me any longer. I'm here. Now you stop. Come on, somebody. Amen. Huh? I said, now you stop. That's what a lot of people are doing. That's what a lot of people are doing. Amen. Amen. Abraham, remember him? Abraham, 75 years old. God speak to him. He was a Syrian. Told him that he was going to make a whole new nation of people out of him. Remember that? A lot of people think that God changed Abraham's name in that first conversation. He did. 